Subhanahu wa allow us to complete this Ramadan. With mercy and with worship at the end of Ramadan, your place in Jannah is guaranteed for you, right? And you're written down from Al-Utaqa, you're written down from those that are freed from the punishment of Jahannam, right? It's written down for you at the end of Ramadan that this, that this person has completed this period. They just spent the last 10 nights of Ramadan, may Allah allow us to witness them, saying, Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, you are the one who forgives. You love to forgive, so forgive me. They just finished it, and so Allah writes it all down for them. And so he said, if you think about this person, Sufi Dat al-Shayateen, he said the meaning, one, one potential meaning that could be extracted from this is that, and this is where we really want to get, that the Shayateen that used to bother you, with certain sins that used to be able to find access to you with certain sins are locked up for good post Ramadan because you've repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you said, I'm not going back to those sins. You've made a firm determination to not go back to those sins. And so it's like the shayateen are put away just as you're being recorded amongst the people of paradise at the end of Ramadan, like you have finished that beautiful period of fasting, that beautiful period of worship, you have finished that beautiful period of immersing yourself in Allah's mercy. You have engaged the Quran, you've engaged prayer, you cried in supplication. You are written now at the end of this period amongst uh, the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. The shayateen are locked up and put away. This is a person that I'm not gonna be able to get to anymore because they're not going to give me access. They're not going to give me access. I don't have a way to get back to that person because that person has put in the controls in Ramadan in the midst of their repentance to where they will not let me back in. And so you want to give Shaytan a life sentence, right? You don't just want to give him a month sentence. You want to give him a life sentence. Is it possible? We talked about in the Angels series, we mentioned the, the, uh, a couple of episodes ago, uh, the, the example of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who when the Shaytan sees Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu on the road, he just goes to another road. He says, I have no way to access Umar radiallahu anhu. He's just, he's so determined to please his Lord, to do what's right, that I just can't penetrate his mind. I can't penetrate his heart. I just, you know, it, it, it's, it's defeat, admitting defeat. And Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he said, describing uh, al-waswas al-khannas, al-waswas al-khannas, that Allah describes the shaytan in two seemingly conflicting ways. Al-waswas is the one who whispers. Khannas is the one who sinks away. You know, shayateen can be locked up in Ramadan. You want to drown them to death, right? So khannas is literally someone who sinks, who drowns. They're gone. They cannot, they, you know, not, not in the literal sense, but in the way they can't affect you. They cannot uh, ruin you because you've decided to, to, to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah, he said that when a person uh, remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, when you, when you become heedless of Allah, when you become heedless of Allah, then you let shaitan in to whisper. And then when you remember Allah, إِذَا ذَكَرَ Allah خَنَّس When you remember Allah, shaitan's like a drowning individual, like a drowning creation. He's got no access to you. He has no way to get to you because your dhikr is forming a fortress. Your remembrance is forming a fortress. Allah refers to the Quran as dhikr. Allah refers to salah as dhikr, to the prayer as dhikr, as remembrance. What are the fortresses that you're building in your life right now to give shaitan a life sentence so that he will never be able to come back to you with the power and the access that he had before and his power and access was already merely of one of temptation, merely of one of whispering, and he's not gonna be able to have that or, or he will not be able to have that to the same effect and impact if you sentence him by your actions and by your setting up those fortresses, the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ability to, uh, so that he may not be able to penetrate once again. And so we've got to think about these things in the ulama, uh, really talk about this idea of making the shaitan uh, despair in you. And that's a beautiful concept. How do I make the devil? And his name is Iblis. 